Okay, let's pick up where we left off. So in this example, we're gonna find k such that the line is tangent to the graph of the function. So here's our function, and this is our line. So we wanna make sure that this line is tangent to this curve. So we gotta figure out, well, what value of k is actually gonna do that? So one of the things that we need to pay attention to is that it's this line is tangent to the graph of the function. So whenever we see tangent line or line is tangent or tangent to, we're gonna think of derivatives. Because again, what is a derivative? The slope of the tangent line. So let's get the derivative of the function. So that would be a negative two x. And the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. Well, here's the tangent line. Well, what's the slope of the tangent line? Negative four. So we can solve for x and x would equal two. So that's kind of weird because it wanted to know what k was. Well, in order to get k, we gotta figure out, well, what point is are these two things, or is this gonna be tangent to this function? So we know what x values it occurs at. So let's go ahead and plug it into the function, and then we're also going to plug it into the line. So k minus 4, that's when we plug the 2 and for x into the function. And then we're also going to plug it into here. So negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, and then plus the 7. And we did that because the line and the function, when they're tangent, they're gonna share the same exact y value. So at the same x, they should have the same y, or that's also the point of intersection. So now, whoa, almost knocked the camera over. Now <laughs> you can solve for k, and k is gonna equal three. Okay, so that brings us now to uh, the second part of the section, uh, which is not as long as the first part, but kind of switching gears a little bit. Now we're gonna look at some applications. So rates of change. So we asked this question a little bit earlier. What is a derivative? Well, it's the slope of the tangent line. So what exactly do we mean by the slope? And this is just kind of in general anyway, like what do we mean by the slope? Well, the slope says how fast uh, the function is changing, whether it's a line, a curve, you know, whatever the function is, you know, the slope is gonna tell you how fast that function is changing. So then the derivative tells us how function is changing, or in other words, the rate of change of the function. So we have two types of rates of change. We have average and we also have instantaneous. Uh, so average rate of change, we've looked at before uh, in your previous classes, whether it was Algebra 2, Math 120, Pre-Calculus, Math 370, wherever you took that, somewhere in there you saw what an average rate of change was. So here's the formula for it. Uh, F of B minus F of A over B minus A. Uh, and if you notice, it's called the average rate of change, but this is also another formula, like I had a different name to it, and that was also the slope formula. It'd be like y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now the instantaneous, that's the new guy. So the instantaneous rate of change, that is uh, actually the value of the derivative at a specific point. So what exactly is the difference between the average rate of change and the instantaneous rate of change? So the average rate of change, you can think of it um, just kind of like as you were driving your car. So picture yourself driving from your home to school. Uh, and so if you calculate it out from start to finish from your home to school, what your average 
speed was. Uh, you know, most people, if they didn't take the freeway, probably like 40 miles an hour or so. So an, an on average, 40 miles per hour. Well, the instantaneous would be how fast you're going at a particular moment in time. So if it took you like 30 minutes to get to school, your average speed would be 40 miles an hour. But let's say like at, you know, at 10 minutes, how fast are you going like right then? Or at 20 minutes, how fast are you going right there? Uh, so that's the difference between the two. Average looks at the whole interval. Instantaneous looks at, you know, a, a very specific moment in time. Okay, so let's see how to calculate both. So find the instantaneous or the average rate of change. Uh, and I changed the directions a little bit in the note packet um, just because I forgot to do it before I was making the video. So we're going to do the average rate of change of the function over that interval. And then we're going to find the instantaneous rate of change at the endpoints. Okay, so the ARC, this one's pretty easy. Should be somewhat familiar. You're just doing this part right here. So f of b, so f of e to the fourth minus f of a or f of e squared all over b minus a. So we just have to calculate that out and simplify as much as we can. So 2 ln of e to the fourth minus 2 ln of e squared over e to the fourth minus e squared. So ln's and e, we like them together because most of the time they're gonna cancel out. Uh, so ln of e to the fourth is just four. Four times two is eight. ln of e squared is two. Two times the negative two is the negative four. And then still over e to the fourth minus e squared. So just subtract e to the fourth minus e squared is still in the denominator. You could factor out an e squared if you wanted to, but it's not gonna simplify any more than that. Uh, so you can go ahead and leave it alone. Okay, so let's look at the instantaneous. two-year-old decided she wanted to help. She doesn't know about calculus yet, but she will. Uh, anyway, so the instantaneous rate of change, uh, find the derivative. So this would be 2 times 1 over x, or 2 over x. And then we're going to just find the instantaneous at the endpoints. So it doesn't matter which one you do first, so we can go with a. And then we can do the second one or the B. So two, oops, two over E to the fourth. All right, so that's how you calculate those. So not too hard. As long as you know how to find a derivative, you should be good to go. Okay, so now when we start talking about rates, uh, whether it's average or even instantaneous, we're also talking about Velocity. So velocity is a rate of change. So we'll stop the video here and then we'll keep going in the next one with specifically uh, talking about velocity questions.